Hello everyone, in this video I was going to show you some of the new features in the Raspberry Pi Imager. So this is the official Raspberry Pi Imager from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It makes it very easy to write a new operating system onto a micro SD card that you can then put onto a Raspberry Pi. So I've used this as a snap install from Ubuntu for quite some time now and honestly it does feel a lot easier than using the dd command in Linux, although I suppose that is what dd, uh, the input image file, the output drive and declaring the byte size. Yeah, okay, I've summed up that easily, but, but using a graphical user interface does make it a more pleasing program to use rather than typing out commands. But hey, I'm not going to complain if typing out the commands is your thing. There's this new menu now for advanced options. If you press Control, Shift, and X. So you've got image customization options for this session only or to always use. And I was thinking this seems a really useful feature here. You can make some of the tweaks to the Raspberry Pi before you power it on. I should point out that I mainly use the Ubuntu images nowadays. There's a couple of YAML files you can tweak to, say, set some of the settings for the network. And SSH is enabled by default in Ubuntu, but you have to change the password straight away. Yeah, so that is a little bit different to Raspberry Pi. I'm guessing I would have to type in the SSID. I presume there's no drop-down feature. Sorry, I'm presuming this because I have no Wi-Fi on this computer. It's on the wired LAN. Yeah, change the Wi-Fi country. Setting the locale settings. Anyway, that's fine there. Oh, skip the first run wizard. Hmm. Uh, I noticed they make this thing about enabling telemetry. Well, more like it's enabled by default. Mm -hmm. So this is a mention of changes on the GitHub page. Oh, yes, the NVMe drives. Uh, this is a bit of a lethal one because uh, reading the code, it should only be non-mounted NVMe drives. Not the case on my system. Uh, for all intensive purposes, I can select that and then write to it, therefore making this program about as dangerous as the DD command, the old disk destroyer command. As far as the telemetry goes, there is a bit of write-up on it in that they're trying to understand which are the most popular distros to display there. I don't necessarily agree with this, but uh, in principle, it's not too bad, really. It's very easy to disable, but uh, it's a bit annoying that I didn't know it was there because uh, I should have been starting it a different way or modifying the config file. Great. Well, at least with that menu there, there is a way of disabling it quite easily. Uh, this is the file for doing the telemetry. Okay, I suppose I'm not going to get bogged down too much in this because this video is getting a little bit... Uh, off topic. Anyway, this is the program in action. So you just select the distro that you want. I should have this one downloaded already. Uh, no way I'm going to write that to the NVMe drive because that would just trash my operating system. So yeah, I need to select the USB drive and then I write to it. So all existing data on the generic mass storage device will be erased. Yes, and <laughs> I just said no. Uh, why Why is it some of these programs switch around yes, no, cancel? I'm sure there should be a standard. <laughs> yeah, see, OK there, OK and cancel. You know, I just pop my sudo password in. It takes a little while to write to the micro SD card, but hey, that's uh, all of an issue with uh, the micro SD card speed. Uh, this is, what was it, a class 10 device? Was it U1 or not? Um, just going to look, see if I've got another one there in the box. You know, I'm not sure it is, but then again, I wasn't actually planning on putting this one in a Raspberry Pi. I just wanted to demo it in this program. Now, fortunately, I chose the Raspberry Pi OS Lite, so it's a little bit smaller than the full-blown desktop version. It's more of a server version, which is fine. Depends on the use of them. I've used them on headless servers in the past. <laughs> in fact, I suppose, ironically, I've actually made more use of the Lite version, then I have the desktop version. But yeah, I've made more use out of Raspberry Pis as servers than Raspberry Pis as computers. If I'm just running the Raspberry Pi in the form of a server, then there's no need for a desktop. So that's the way I view it really. I'm just logging into a terminal interface, generally via SSH, and I can do what I want there, and then I'm using the Raspberry Pi in some other way. Yeah, a service, web server, whatever. 
After copying the image to the micro SD card, the Raspberry Pi imager then goes and verifies the write. So at least this way I will know it will work when I power on the Raspberry Pi. And if I was really certain about it, I can cancel the verification and just get on and use it. So initially I tried these settings with Ubuntu server image and it didn't work. It couldn't find the first run.sh file, which okay, that makes sense because that wouldn't exist in Ubuntu, it's different. Uh, but then I tried the Raspberry Pi image and I got the same error message. So I'm rather puzzled. I don't know if that's because of how I've installed it with the snap file. So I decided for completeness to try the deb version of the Raspberry Pi imager and that has worked successfully on writing the initial script file to the micro SD card. So interesting comparison between the deb package and the snap package. So clearly a bug report and needs to be raised on the snap. And if I look in the boot mount on the micro SD card, there is this file called firstrun.sh. And we'll take a look at the contents of that. I'll zoom in a bit so you can read it. So to set the host name and it has set password for the user and enables SSH. So that certainly helps on the initial configuration. And yeah, it would definitely help if I have a few Raspberry Pis to set up or I would like to replicate this setup a few times. So yeah, definitely a fan of that new feature. It just simplifies things. And the fact that these settings can remain persistent or you can just use them as a one-off. So yeah, good flexibility there. Anyway, that was a look at the new features of the Raspberry Pi Imager. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.